Glory to Jesus Christ. I don't know if you've ever read the Song of Songs. It's a beautiful romantic exchange in the Old Testament. Some people will even say it's sexual. Have you ever read the Song of Songs? It's this song sung between the lover and his beloved. And um, the lover, of course, is our Lord Jesus Christ, who came to give himself for the life of the world, to give himself for you and for me. That's better love than you'll find in any Valentine card. But in that love poem, which is what it is, we hear these words. The sound of my lover, here he comes, springing across the mountains, leaping across the hills. See, he is standing behind our wall, gazing through the windows, peering through the lattices. Here he is. Here is the lover. He's come. He's come for you. He's looking. He's looking in the window. He's looking for his beloved. And he's more excited than any young guy on a date. Because he's looking to see you. He's looking to see me. My lover speaks and says to me, Arise, my friend, my beautiful one, and come away with me. For see, the winter is past, the rains are over and gone, the flowers appear on the earth, the time of pruning the vines has come, and the song of the turtle dove is heard in our land. The fig tree puts forth its figs, and the vines in bloom give forth fragrance. Arise, my friend and my beautiful one, and come. Just in case you weren't aware, this is a vineyard. The church is a vineyard. We're meant to be growing fruit for the Lord. We're meant to have a harvest of grapes. As beautiful as these chandeliers are, please God, they represent spiritual bunches of grapes because they'll be more glorious than these candles that we have up by the ceiling. Please God, that harvest of grapes in our church, in our parish, in our community, in our lives, in our prayer, please God, there will be a rich harvest of fine fruit. What are grapes used for traditionally? as well as eating. They're made into wine. And if ever there were a symbol of the kingdom of heaven and of its joy, wine is it. Grapes become wine. Wine becomes heaven. Heaven is joy. And so in the gospel today, we hear the lover coming to his vineyard and getting beaten up, dragged outside of it, prophecy, Jesus was killed outside of Jerusalem and killed. And as Jesus said, what do you suppose the king will do to those wicked tenants? This is a bad day to be clergy. I mean... I'm a tenant of the vineyard. What else could I possibly be? I don't ever want to find out what the king is going to do to the wicked and lazy tenants that have spent all their time partying 
So there's no harvest. There's no grapes. He comes looking for fruit and finds a wreck. God forbid. God forbid. May all of our lives more and more be full of the kind of fruit that he's looking for. He's peering in the windows. He's looking for us like a beloved looking for the one whom he loves. And he's looking to see that sweet fruit. That's what he's come for. And we all know what kind of fruit the Lord loves. He looks for love and joy and peace. All those wonderful fruits of the Holy Spirit. Long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Please, God, our lives are growing much fruit. Much of those fruits. Because the Lord is looking for it. He is the owner, after all. And has every right to come back looking for the rich harvest that he's planted. That he's prepared the vineyard to grow. He protected it, put a hedge round it, built a watchtower. Fertilised it. He's expecting fruit. Now I know that our parish is full of good fruit. We've seen much good fruit. Jesus said, by this is my Father glorified, that you bear much fruit. And if you remain in me, if you remain in me, you will bear fruit. Every branch that remains in me bears fruit. Just as a branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it remains in the vine... Neither can you unless you remain in me. And going back to the Song of Songs, the beloved says, the lover says to his beloved, The vines are ready for harvest. They're giving forth this fragrant smell. It's harvest time. And this time of year, In the Greek world, in the Byzantine world that our church with its set of readings comes from, this time of year was harvest time. Everybody would have been a part of picking and harvesting and pressing the grapes. From oldest to youngest child, everyone would have been involved in harvesting grapes at this time. And that is why the church places these two readings that we've heard today. Because we hear about the possibility of God not finding what he's looking for. And in Song of Songs, as he says to his beloved, Come away with me. The vines are ready. The vines are in bloom. The vines give forth fragrance. He says, Let me see your face. Let me hear your voice. For your voice is sweet and your face is lovely. Brothers and sisters, if you want to produce a rich harvest of fruit for the Lord, let him see your face. Let him hear your voice. Because the wonderful news is that your voice is sweet to him. Your face is lovely to him. And he goes on to say, catch us the foxes, the little foxes that damage the vineyard. For our vineyards are in bloom. All he's asking is to see your face, hear your voice, and catch the little foxes. What are those little foxes? They're those little things that get away, that get in the way of us and our lover. Get rid of those little foxes. It's not usually the big things that drag us away. But it's the accumulation of little things. Little foxes here. Little foxes there. 
resentments between people here. Arguments and disagreements there. And I'm probably just not, not, I'm probably just not going to talk to that person anymore. That's a little fox. That's my, maybe even a medium-sized fox. I'm just not going to bother with him anymore. Or the fox of, I don't feel like praying today. Or the little fox of, I don't feel like coming to church. Whatever those little foxes are in your life, he wouldn't ask us to catch them if it were not within our power to do so. Maybe we can't catch them, but we can at least chase them away. Chase those little foxes away. Because somebody wants to see your face. Somebody wants to hear your voice. And somebody wants to prepare a feast of fine and aged wines. That's how Isaiah prophesies the kingdom of heaven. A feast of choicest food and fine wines. If you let him see your face and hear your voice. If you do what he says and chase away those little foxes, then the sweet-smelling grapes in our vineyard, in your vineyard, in the vineyard of your heart and my heart, will be harvested and will produce the tasty, rich, fine wine of the joy of the kingdom of heaven. Glory to Jesus Christ. Glory to Christ.